Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is another normal ass normal game sent in by you, the fans, to Life's a Glitch TV at gmail.com. Mr. Max was black. Mm -hmm. Hit me up with the sound of waking up in the morning and you're really gonna piss, but you just cannot get rid of that major morning wood. Let me rub one out real quick. <laughs> How do you do that shit when you need to piss like a fucking racehorse? That just, that just sounds uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I typically don't... sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. I actually don't have to pee first thing in the morning. I usually take a piss at, like... I, I, I wake up, I'll take a shower, and then I'll, like, piss. It's, like, not the first thing I do when I get out of bed. I'm weird like that. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely... Every morning, I'm like, man, I gotta get... Damn. I gotta get to, to this so, bathroom. I gotta so that morning piss. wood's a problem for you. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, I, right. I haven't 40-year-old virgin myself where I'm, like, fucking straight pissing into my own mouth. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, it does sometimes get complicated when you got a full-ass bladder and and, uh, and you need to piss. But, you know, other than other than laying on the toilet to try and fucking piss into it, see how it's kind of a complicated situation. Mm. But what do we got going on here, Mr. Black? In the bottom left, we've got Vic... Uh, Bansomer, I'm just gonna call him Vic. In the top, uh, top right, we got Major Wood. Mmm. Major Wood. Okay. Uh, normal ass, normal game. It's a master's level game. So when I loaded up this replay, Ooh. I was like, Ooh, okay. All right. Some master's level play. PVZ, my favorite matchup. So we're off to a good start. I mean, I think that deserves a little bit of this right there. Y'all know what to do. Could just do the thing. We got a little, little pokesy going on uh, down here. As soon as I show you the action, just two zerglings taking a little tickle over at the gateway. Supply blocked pretty heavily right now. There we go. He's out of it. Bob doing his job. Uh, opted to go ahead and grab the very fast Nexus with Oak rushing out the warp gate research, which, as a Protoss player. Um, can signify a couple of things. Uh, number one, you're just trying to get out, you know, units that have gas a little bit quicker. But typically what this says to your opponent is you're not really planning on being overly aggressive. Like, you don't have some sort of, when it comes to, like, gateway warping units, you know, typically you're going to want to get warp gate immediately. And a lot of the times what this signifies is, is your uh, the Protoss is going to go for heavy gas build and go for faster tech, which is usually air. And if we take a look over here, we've got two assimilators already. Okay, so he is going for a fast robotics. So it wasn't air. It was the Robo, uh, which I probably should have looked top left to see it. But uh, the Overlord sees this. So that's unfortunate. You can tell he's kind of kind of hiding it because he's got it back here opposed to like, you know, having it here or down here or uh, up here in this corner. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it's going to be like Fast Colossus or maybe, I don't know. I'm just talking right now, Adam. <laughs> I'm just talking. <laughs> Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to stop the. I didn't right. want to stop the uh, the train of thought there or anything. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, uh, uh, he's got. You know, he's going to have drop capabilities here. He's probably going to be thinking about that, I imagine. But like you said, the overlord did catch him there. There's the robotics base. So yeah, some colossi. I guess it could be. be uh, it could be disruptors. Menu. Could be disruptors as well. That's true. But a disruptor drop, perhaps. Yeah. I'm. Uh, my money's going to be on colossus. We'll see if I'm right or not. Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, but yeah. Wait, if you're playing, if you're playing and you're in his shoes and you're doing something like this and you're trying to be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, sneaky with where the robo facility is, I mean, depending on who you're up against, you know, their overlord uh, patterns are, uh, you know, they're different where they send them to go and, yeah. and do their scouting. Was there somewhere that you found was the most successful to hide it or did you even yeah. bother hiding it most of the time and just rely on Usually timings? here. I'm usually putting it here because... If an overlord starts coming down here, right, you can get a stalker out quick enough to, like, kill it before it can see. And then a lot of the times, overlords are sitting, like, right here where they can't be hit. So they'll slowly start working the way over here. And typically, you know, you can just have something here and it'll be dead by the time it sees it. So this is my favorite spot to put it. Not, like, right here, but more, like, 
right here ish gives you just a little bit more uh, more time anyway up here we got a little uh warp coming through just as i was saying it doesn't seem like he's gonna rush with uh with some units he does just that here but is. this isn't this isn't like uh a game ending attack this is harassment this is just like let's warp in some stuff let's pick off some shit and then in behind we're teching and there's the colossi coming out as well Ooh. so Ooh. he is going for that okay this is good i mean this is master's level so you're gonna see some uh you know some high level micro happening he loses nothing here but what he did is he forces out your opponent to start using this uh you, roach correct roach or lings instead of droning heavy and in the meantime, he's out here teching. He's got a Colossi out. He is getting a Disruptor. Um, and he's going to continue to keep warping. And, uh, you know, hopefully be able to go and hit an expansion and start working his way up the map. See what happens. Yeah, and expand so he shows, behind uh, He shows... Yeah, of course. He shows his hand there. So the Zerglings are, you know, the, the, the tell. He's got the, uh, the Colossi, which means that Spire goes down immediately and now uh now our protoss is working kind of against the clock to get this up there uh and get some work done with it before he's going to start yeah. backing it up uh with uh with the air that the zerg is going to be cranking out here so he's got disruptor as well yep. on the way i suspect that's great think he's probably gonna be dropping with that i would imagine uh but never or it doesn't really matter at this point if he's gonna force the front if he's gonna do a full frontal if you know what i mean mm. having a disruptor throw some balls in their face on that full frontal is not a bad move either so i like what he's doing he's gonna go after the third uh, but he is out of position with this warp gate which is a problem uh he is gonna be microing this uh colossi quite a bit or colossus quite a bit and uh there it is he's getting surrounded he's gonna drop it up at the top he's gonna start picking up stalkers and he's gonna uh, bring it back here as well. So really good positioning here. He kind of got caught out. That was a bit of a of a mistake, but uh, rebounding nicely. He needs to get that disruptor in play. This disruptor is so good against Rouch. I'm. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see it. And he doesn't even know it's coming, right? So he's gonna force a fight here. Then he's gonna. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh! Beautiful. <laughs> Ah, uh, it gets me hard. Absolutely dunked it. Just the balls on the chin yeah. of uh, of Major Wood there. Uh, well done, well executed. And we've seen nice. good micro in general here from the Protoss thus far. Nice another hit there from the Disruptor. But just, you know, something as simple as having the Warp Prism on the edge of the, uh, of the cliff earlier, bringing the Stalkers up the cliff was nice to see. And now you're getting some... Micro, mm -hmm. another few roaches picked off. This, nice. this, uh, this. disruptor. What? How many kills are we at now for that disruptor? We got two disruptors on the field now. Whoa, oh boy. Yeah. We still it's have two. Intense. But this is this is getting this is getting closer and closer to uh, to Major Wood being in some serious trouble. Although all all things considered, oh! he still hasn't lost the third. Oh! He's to pick up the Colossus. Okay. Nice. Well, there you have it. Nice, nice. Yeah, he didn't I, I get the know. third. This, this is. So this is yeah. So this is so all I'm gonna ask you, Mr. Black, is uh, is you know uh, behind all of this, the Protoss did Rip. just start a third. There yeah. goes that. Just started yeah. a third. He did not secure the kill on the third of the Zerg. Does this actually technically put him on the back foot? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Uh, Protoss is behind now, and he had a substantial amount of minerals throughout that. But you gotta understand, it is super micro intensive. So every single Stalker, Colossus, Disruptor. You know, it, it, it needs to be watched with a very careful eye because if you just look away even for a second, you can find yourself in a horrible position. He is going to survive this attack here. He's going to have to be... Uh, I would have just loved to have seen him put down the Nexus and then just recall once he realized, like, okay, I'm just... There's too much going on. Let me just recall everything. Get that Nexus going. Get up a couple of uh, shield batteries here. Start warping in units at the third. Wait for the counter and then push it back. Use the disruptors. He overstayed his welcome here. I also would have liked to have seen him attack up through this side. Opposed to being here. Where you're going to have units coming from you from this side and this side. Would have been nice because then he would have had this choke. I know it's still a very wide choke. But it would have allowed him to micro just a little bit easier. And then recall back if he needed to. A uh, couple of mistakes yeah. there from the Protoss, but very well done here from Major Wood uh, dealing with those big disruption hits. It was looking very bleak there for a second. A lot of sentries up in the front. Oh, He's going to lose a lot, lot of, of roads. Oh, my lose. God. Oh, wow. Oh, God. No, oh, he was not aim moving. 
He wasn't A-moving. He just lost a ton of roaches there. I thought it was going to be the other way around. I thought the sentries were doomed in that scenario, and that would have been a critical loss yeah. for Vic. But Vic, on the other hand, manages to get the ball off and take out so many roaches that it's going to force Major Wood back. I was just about to say great job for Major Wood being patient before <laughs> he was there at the third. He yeah. walked away and to, to get the rest of his army come back again, but just he wasn't A moving. Clearly, he wasn't attacking, and at the same time, some uh, little cheeky zealot harassment. But nevertheless, man, I thought Major was in a great position there, and just like that, an unfortunate misclick, I have to assume, has resulted in him going back home, doing a lot less damage than he probably should. Yeah, I think what happened is he saw all those sentries there and his dick got hard. I mean, pardon the pun, but, you know, that morning wood was re-sprung back up. And then he realized, like, oh, shit, that's a disruptor. And bad things happen. Once again, Vic putting himself in a horrible position here. I mean, yeah, he's going to get off. Nah, he only got three roaches there. He's going to lose the disruptor. That's not a good trade. And now he's at a position with no blink for these stalkers. He's going to lose two more stalkers in a century there. Three more stalkers now. Managing to pick off a couple of corruptors, which I don't even think is a big deal at this point because it seems as though Major Wood has completely gotten rid of uh, going air. Uh, back and forth here happening. Another bit of a mistake. I would have liked to have seen a drop happen here first and then move up. So now he's doing the drop. Then I would have loved to have seen him hit the third, recall back, you know, uh, just a multi-prong attack here. But we'll see what happens. He's going to go he's, after the spire. He seems very... Yeah, he's going to go for the spire. I, he, he's not going to get it, I don't no, think. No. Uh, he's going to lose a lot of minerals worth of zealots here. Yep. Uh, yep, there they go. So once again, just leaving with no real success. But here's he's having the same thought you are. He's just not hitting it at the right time, right? Mm -hmm. He's getting into possession, a position to go to the third, but he didn't wait on the drop to, to, to start the attack. Now he's going up. He's doing it one after another instead of simultaneously, and it's just allowing Major Wood to slap that dick all over the map wherever he needs it to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, and now he's going to get chased back out of that third position as Major Wood continues to uh, to build up this Roach army, which he's been allowed to basically just amass Roach. He's upgrading into it. Protoss is upgrading uh, right now. He just got his charge lots finished, and his upgrades are starting to roll through as well. But I don't like. I know this is back and forth. But for as long as this uh, this Zerg is allowed to continue to sit at this four base. Yeah, Protoss is eventually likely to be on the back foot. Yeah, I mean, there there is a, a what, what, 119 supply to 160. It's looking good here for Zerg. It's all going to be dependent on how big these disruptions can hit. Because he is in such a roach-heavy um, composition, it's pretty much all roach with just one corruptor. I mean, this could be very... Oh, that was nice. It could be... I don't want to see any more wasted volleys, though. That's... Yeah, he's wasting volleys. He needs... He needs these disruptors to hit the, the roaches. If he doesn't hit the roaches, he's just going to lose. Just look. That was once again bad. He's, he's going to... Look, he's focused firing on these disruptors. All three of them gone now. Stalker composition. Just, stalkers versus just roach with no blink. The roach are going to win here on this creep. Now he's warping in more zealots. I'm do, I am This I like. This I like a great deal. Going after the drones. He's getting the tech. Infestation pit is going to go down here. And now he's pushing here as well. So he's going to get rid of this hatch. This is very, very good play here for Vic after a bit of a shitty play with, uh, with those disruptions going off with his disruptor. Yeah, he was just way too focused on getting drones with yeah. these disruptors, which at this point in the game is just not the value that he needs. Look yeah. at this army. He's, again, on creep, a lot of roaches. He's going to lose a lot of stalkers. Just a bunch of mismanaged resources from Vic. He's got the right ideas. He's just kind of just not quite there on the execution. He's yeah. always kind of one half step behind where he needs to be. He's going to grab this. This is actually a huge pickup here with those zealots yeah. right now. Yeah. At the that layer main. gone. They're taking that out is... is Layer is gone. That's going to be a massive, massive deal. Huge disruption balls here, but a lot of value for roaches. Roaches are not expensive. You can crank a lot of those bad boys out, and the amount of disruptors and stalkers that group of, uh, of roach just took out is just insane. And now he's into installing the fourth of Vic, and Vic is going to need that economy if he's going to be able to keep up with the, uh, the mast of Major Wood. Yeah, it's going to be kind of crappy here for Major Wood if he doesn't kill this Nexus. He really needs to kill this Nexus off, and I think that our Protoss player is going to be able to keep this alive. Um, I do like the counterattack. Um, I think 
Major Wood got a little bit overzealous with uh, bringing up half of his Roach army to just kill off a few of these. This stuff was already dead. He should have taken, taken his whole entire army down and just countered after that big attack from Protoss. Would have at least been able to kill this. And he still might. It's going to be close. Two Archons there in the front. The Roaches are going to focus fire on this Archon. It's going to go down in three volleys. And then all he's got left is this Disruptor, which is going to go down here in two hits. And he's going to lose this Nexus. Oh. Things are looking pretty good here for Major Wood. So many expensive units as Protoss has just unfortunately lost to these roaches and for kind of no reason getting only two roaches there He had five on the volley on the original uh, the original roach army coming down and as the uh, as the zerg is now More or less just reduced to three bases. Yeah, uh, he's gonna probably also consider where is my fourth? What am I doing here? Yeah. I've been doing well killing a lot of these high-cost units of the uh, of the Protoss But at the end of the day I have yet to be able to break in and get to that third or do major economic damage We're pretty much on even footing and as you can see in the supply I mean a 100 supply or 110 supply Protoss yeah. can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a 129 zerg Depending on the comp and we're getting into some big Archon territory Archons and disruptors and stalkers. Oh my yeah, I mean, we're still, you know, 64 probes to 51 drones, and it's exactly what you said. It's, it's, it is a three-base Zerg versus a three-base Protoss at this point. Well, really a two-base because this one's mined out, but killing this yeah, was yeah. massive, but it's the tech. It's these disruptors with the Archon, and now he... Oh, he still doesn't have Blink. So if he had and Blink he's here... he's walking into getting some Mutas now, so the Mutas mm. are unfortunately showing up a bit late to the party yeah. right when the protoss is now shifted into archon this game could end right here just depending it just depends oh there's a lot of mutas though it's a lot of muta he misses those volleys the roaches are coming in oh that's a big one right there that one oh. hurt decent uh force fields there but so many mutalists now, finally he's recalling back he's gonna try and warp in uh i don't know adam it's not looking good here for protoss once this counter comes this is very this is gonna be very very tough to beat that's very very tough that's so so many muta i mean certainly uh, yeah. against against archon you have to be careful but as we've seen in, in previous games yeah, it's game we've over. come back you need a lot it's game you can't just you can't just walk in with a couple you need a lot of archon to go up against a lot of muta yeah and i think major wood is going to be able to get his off his rocks off and take a piss pretty yeah. soon after this is said and done because you i know, believe this is probably the last push i really feel like that could have still been anybody's game but him kind of just pushing up there with those with those units he had without scouting or anything like that i i, I really with, with the tech in the the three base i i feel like protoss actually could have stayed in this game longer and potentially won he just kept moving out with these packs of armies and there's so much creep spread out there zerg sees everything he's got time and I just feel like the Zerg has just been doing better with the engagements and just knowing when to push in, sort of when to pull out. Yeah, a couple of mistakes were made, but we all make those uh, in, in these games, especially at this level. But I just feel like Major Wood has just been more of a consistent player throughout this game, although Vic has done really, really good job with certain engagements, but just overextended a bit too much each time. And uh, unlike Zerg, you can't recover as quickly as Protoss as you can as Zerg when these small mistakes uh, are being made. And yeah, Major go. Wood, I mean, with a name like that, you better be good at pushing in and pulling out, if you know what I mean. And he's definitely been more patient of the two, picking his times better. Yeah. That's a pretty big hit there, but it's just yeah, not going to be enough. enough at this yeah. point. He's just going to get overwhelmed, That's uh, it. and he can't recover that, and so he's just going to leave the game. And there you have it, Major Wood uh, taking it in a very back-and-forth match. I would say that, yeah, I think, that, I mean, the tech definitely would have made you uh, believe and made me believe that there was a good window there for the Protoss to, you know, to stay in it, especially since they were kind of even yeah. economically speaking. But I think the biggest issue, and you touched on this earlier, uh, was, was not only, of course, his patience, where he was a little bit too all any with a lot of his attacks he didn't want to say like he didn't he didn't care about saving units until it was too late yeah it was his positioning or where he chose to attack continuously going up into the into the try converging four-way or even four-way stop here 
over yeah. and over and over again before yeah. the Zerg had his, his, his fourth there, where you now have three different positions in which you can get fucked by when the Zerg shows up on the scene and you know he's got it creeped all on all sides instead of you I mean you know your priorities that third base like you were pointing out before that's your yeah. priority you can go up the one lane highway here and if they're going to come in from behind with Zer uh, with uh, roach they've got to run a yeah. fucking marathon yeah. to get all the way down and behind you and yeah. at that point you've already beaten you've already you've either you're either fighting half his army or you're just having already steamrolled the third and with that third gone i think that protoss would have been in a much better yeah. position and very likely could have won the game and i think you nailed it dude i i think what it was is is it was very all any and i'm almost thinking that the reason why he didn't put down the third is because he was trying to win the game just straight up early on it didn't work and then he's like oh shit i need to expand and he did that also because he did do a fair amount of damage he just overstayed his welcome and uh, yeah, he was just basically playing catch up. And the reason why he was able to stay in it so long is he just had the tech and those disruptions were just hitting and hitting. But it gets to the point where you can't just win the game on a couple of big disruption hits. You need an army behind it as well. I don't know why he didn't have blink at all throughout any of that. He could have done a lot more uh, micro damage. But one way or another, solid game, good back and forth, PVZ, master's level. We can't complain, Adam. Can't complain. No, that was beautiful. I like that match. Yeah. That was a great match. Very fun. Uh, very fun. Very well done. I'm, I'm going to say the highlight of the match for me, even though it was like for Masters, probably relatively simple. Is I don't know how I can direct you to, but to the to the to the to the, the left corner of the Zerg's main, in that uh, in the, the in the opening attack, the left corner, uh, bottom left corner. Sorry, uh, right there. Uh, where he had that first engagement with Stalkers, and he, and, and he had the drop, he had the warp prism with him. Uh, the thing that, 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 that I liked the most seeing from, uh, from our Protoss player was bringing the Stalkers one at a time as they were getting uh, forced, of course, into the warp prism, but not dropping them back down below, but dropping them up above, mm -hmm. where, of course, they have vision and, and they have high ground, which is a better place to, to put them. And that's just something that I think if you're... If you're if you're platinum or diamond and you're trying to pick up on some micro shit, that was a very good thing to watch. You had him had the warp prism right at the edge of, of the where the base transitions to the low ground. And so you don't have to move the warp prism. You can simply yeah. click into the warp That's prism right. and out of the warp prism on a higher ground. That's and right. I think that was probably uh, my favorite move there from uh, from a Protoss player. As for the Zerg, my favorite thing, his patience. The thing that, did, that I think that was the defining factor, the big one was on that push that he had at the Protoss's third, where he had a lot of roaches. He could have stuck around. Yeah. He still had like 10 fucking roaches with him, but he looked at it and he said, you know what? This isn't worth it. If I lose these 10 roaches, I'm going to go back, bring in the rest of my army, and then I'm going to sweep to the other side of the map and see about that fourth. And I think that was his, uh, his best move of the game, personally. All right. Well, guys, another normal last normal game. Send them in to life's a glitch tv at gmail.com we'll see you on the next one